Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night, about 10.38 p.m. California time here, September 3rd, 2024. Our latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.3 into the California area. Uh, we also did see a little bit of movement up north here into the Gulf of Alaska as well. Look at this 4.2. Uh, actually, it's just south here of the uh, Gulf of Alaska. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but it is on the EMSC, just off the coast of uh, Canada, it looks like, along the North American and the Pacific Plate boundary. It's been a little while since we've seen any earthquake activity specifically here on that segment of the plate boundary. So a little bit of renewed activity striking up here north of the Cascadia. As uh, far as uh, California goes, a couple earthquakes here uh, outside the San Francisco Zoo. Hmm. Along the San Andreas Fault here, a 1.4. And uh, looks like there was another earthquake in there as well with a uh, actually a little swarm of activity here outside the San Francisco Zoo area. 2.0, 1.9, 1.4. That is on the San Andreas Fault. Uh, further down south here is Southern California area. Uh, really not seeing anything of abnormal movement. Uh, there's a little bit of migration here. Look at this pattern uh, on the North American side of the plate boundary just off the San Andreas Fault here. Uh, you know, we got to watch these little patterns, I guess, right? Because we've seen a whole bunch of elevated activity here recently in Southern California. And, uh, you know, it, it looks like things are getting ready to ramp up here as far as some larger scale activity goes. So just a matter of time, I feel. And, uh, uh, we haven't really seen things return to normal out here in the last couple months. So things have been elevated. As uh, far as anything above the 2.5 level, there was that 2.9 outside of Bakersfield area. That's the region that's seen that 5.2 a few weeks back. Although it looks like the multitude of quakes here have died down. Still seeing some movement out into the Nevada area, northwest of Las Vegas. And uh, a little swarming going on out there around the Goldfield Hills area. Uh, there's the activity down south here in the Baja, California area. Kind of want to focus more on that region uh, where we've seen uh, a decent swarm of earthquake activity here recently. Let me pull up this map and show you guys here. Uh, the very tip of Baja, California around the uh, Cabos San Lucas area. I guess this is a uh, high profile vacation spot right I, I don't know i've never been down here on vacation in fact uh, i've never been uh, well, as far as vacation goes <laughs> outside the country really haven't been but there's a swarm of earthquake activity down here uh and in the last uh mostly in the last 24 hours got uh, some force stirring up out here and it's uh more prominent here on the earthquake 3d globe where there's uh, quite a bit more earthquake activity there quite a few threes and fours in this area and uh, I pulled up some historical data here for the uh, uh, Cabo San Lucas area and the extreme southern tip here of the Baja California region and uh, obviously along the plate boundary here they get some big earthquakes there's a fract a couple fracture zones out here it's a plate boundary here between the North American and the Pacific plate got the Cocos plate down south here um, which is this plate boundary. But uh, this area where we're seeing the swarming activity, not a whole lot of historical data out here, specifically in this region. Uh, there was a 5.0 here back in 2009. Uh, and a little bit further up north here, a 6.1 back in 1936. So obviously this area can get some earthquake activity. Uh, it's just the movement though that we're seeing is uh, away from the plate boundary here at the southern end southern tip here of the um, Baja California area so it's really not even close here to the plate boundary but nonetheless uh, a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up out there today continue to keep an eye on it it's just a, a sign here of um, you know an increasing earthquake sequence going on here across the west coast southern California and down south here in general last couple weeks here have been quite active Yellowstone National Park, nothing, zip zero, not that showing up there. So let's go double check, see what we have going on. There's those thunderstorms earlier. Um, and there was quite a few of them. Look at that, a lot of thunderstorms spewing up. Uh, those are not, uh, you know, magma movement. I guess someone could get on here and probably fear monger. Look at these graphs. There's something going on here at Yellowstone. That's 
it's about ready to blow. But yeah, no, definitely not. Uh, these are thunderstorms from earlier. And, you know, I, I explain it a lot. I try to pinpoint what I see. And we'll go ahead and show you guys real quick. Okay, let's go to the weather radar. Past six hours. And watch this line of thunderstorms brewing up out here uh, through the late early afternoon, late afternoon time period. Really kicking up out there in terms of thunderstorm activity today. So we'll see if this loads here. It looks a little on the slow side tonight. Not for sure why. I'm not going to wait 10 minutes for a six-hour radar to load. But, uh, yeah, that looks like it was about... 22 it may have been even past six hours uh, but as you can see a lot of these thunderstorms brewing up out here and yeah i think it was just a little bit past six hours uh nonetheless though, a lot of wind a lot of uh thunder and lightning out there across yellowstone national park adding to the seismograph stations out here across various areas but far as earthquake activity goes well that's off the plate there's not a whole lot going on here for yellowstone national park super volcano not a whole lot of earthquake activity at all. None. Oklahoma, Texas, still seeing some movement out here across the oil fields. Nothing of any abnormal activity. Uh, look across the rest of the uh, globe here. See what we got. There's that movement, a uh, fairly large earthquake in Iceland there. Away from Grindavik area. This is more up around the northeastern rift zone boundary. Uh, South America, Middle America Trench, still seeing a swarm of activity out here, but uh, nothing big for now. Threes and fours appear to be the sequence of quakes. New Zealand, some threes out there, getting a return of deeper activity out here across the Vanuatu region and the Tonga Trench. This is some of the latest activity here on the globe. Five-pointer and a couple other deeper quakes there into the Tonga Trench area. Uh, looks like uh, Philippines there rocking and rolling slightly. Uh, just outside of the uh, Manila area, 5.3 and a 5.0. This area is a very dynamic region here in terms of plate stress. And it can see some big earthquakes. And uh, just a, a typical day out there along this plate boundary. It, it gets a lot of strain pushed up here. Uh, gets the western side of the Fil Filipino plate. And, uh, you know, earthquake activity is very common in this region. And the big earthquakes can... Uh, uh, pick up as well. Look at this swarm of earthquake activity across the Java Trench there about Sumatra area southeastward. A little sequence of earthquakes there in the three range showing some uh, plate tectonics in action there. Also some movement around the Andaman Sea northward and uh, overall definitely seeing a, tr uh, a little bit of uptick here across this general area as a whole. Java Trench area northward through uh, northern india all shown some elevated activity today uh, across the area just south of turkey a 4.9 that earthquake uh, let's see around the cyprus area looks like south of turkey along the plate boundary earlier this afternoon 4.9 six miles there uh, below the surface for that earthquake aside from that general Smaller microquake activity out there. One earthquake south of South Africa here, 3.3. Nothing big going on there. But, uh, yeah, goodness, 4.2. Uh, let me check out the check out the Canada earthquake map here real quick because that's an a interesting earthquake there. 4.2 was reported off the coast there. Looks like there was an automatic earthquake early warning system issued for this event. Strong shaking was anticipated from that 4.2 earthquake that struck off the coast of the BC region there. Uh, again, that's at the uh, Cascadia, or not Cascadia, but the uh, uh, North American and the Pacific plate boundary here. We'll pull up the plate boundary map. And as you can see, the Cascadia sits south down here. Uh, but this earthquake occurring uh, just off of this area along the plate boundary of Canada. Um, this area is, uh, it can get some earthquakes, but it's, I, I think it's been quite a while out here. It's been awfully quiet along this segment of the plate boundary itself. Uh, but it looks like things may be picking up down south here across the Cascadia, fairly quiet. Uh, some older movement quakes there at the northern end from the last couple weeks. Uh, far as the Cascadia trimmer goes, we got, uh, 
a pretty significant decline in earthquakes, or at least in the epicenters out here of tremors, 130 epicenters. That is down from the typical, oh, five, six, seven hundred tremors that we've been seeing over the last couple weeks here. So it looks like things are toning down for now across the Cascadia. Space weather activity, getting a little bit of blackout there along the uh, data. That occurs every 24 hours there, obviously. Uh, a proton event is kicking up right now across the polar regions. And uh, that is due to uh, some recent large flare activity and subsequent CME activity as well. Uh, none of that was Earth directed, but still the protons are shot off at high speed across various directions. Uh, far as the flare threat goes, it is elevated at about 25% chance. Proton event is elevated as well, 60%, and we're seeing that right now. Uh, M flare activity, 70%, and C flare around 99% chance or so. There are numerous sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. There's a trail of them down here south of the equator of the center portion of the sun that we need to watch here in the coming days for some stronger flaring. Uh, this area right here is rapidly amplifying along with this area of sunspots on the southeastern quadrant of the sun. So we'll continue to keep an eye on those various sunspots as they are um, fairly complex out there and uh, evolving uh, hour by hour. Nothing major going on for the aurora forecast here for now. Fairly minimal across the board. And uh, yeah, we'll just continue to keep an eye on these. Let's give a chick, uh, quick glance here at the numerical model. This is the GFS model here. I'm keeping an eye on the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, we've been, we've been kind of tracking some type of tropical development there in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and there was a couple models showing it hitting Louisiana. But it appears now that uh, the models are fairly consistent with... Uh, no hurricane out here, uh, at least hitting the Gulf states here. Uh, there is some type of tropical development there south around the Yucatan area. Um, we can pull up the latest, or at least one of these maps here, right about, eh, oh, we'll pull up the North American plate here. And I'll show you guys this tropical system right around the 10th or 11th. There's something that forms out here, but really it doesn't even look all that consistent down here across the southern end of, of the Gulf of Mexico. So that's good news, right? It's good news that uh, nothing is at least forecast of form for now. I'm starting to notice a little bit of pattern change up here across the northern Pacific. Of course, we're get, uh, getting into the fall period. Uh, winter coming up here in a couple months as well. Of course, low pressures will be forming out here across various areas, bringing down some cooler air. And uh, goodness, I'm uh, I'm ready for some cooler air. That's for sure. Uh, total accumulated precipitation run out here over the next couple runs here shows uh, well a bunch down in the Gulf of Mexico, Gulf states here. Not a whole lot for the West Coast. Um, there was a forecast model here showing some rain. For Northern California here in the coming days, but it looks like one of the models have backed off. Look at that. Look how quick they dry up. That's very depressing, right? It's almost like, you know, scratching a lottery, like a, I don't, I don't know how to compare it to, but when, when you're looking at a forecast model and you see a bunch of rain coming in and all of a sudden the next model shows nothing at all, well, it's a little dis disappointing, you know, opening a Christmas present there and finding just, uh, Kind of a lump of coal, maybe. That's what it feels like to me, anyway. <laughs> I like the rain and the cooler temperatures, so it's a little disappointing to see that backing off like that. Anyway, um, seismograph stations out here for now all look neutral, equal, and quiet. Not a whole lot of uh, noise being made out there on the uh, seismograph stations here, so that's... Uh, a good sign for the time being, but uh, things can obviously kick up out here, folks. So we'll continue to keep an eye on things overnight and tomorrow. Of course, if anything major pops up here, we'll definitely jump on board and uh, provide an update. 
nothing major going on out there across any buoys. No magical thousand foot uplift of a buoy. I kind of like to watch these buoys that go into uh, event mode sporadically or on an error basis because, uh, you know, it, it's uh, got to know how to read these. This is intermittent data right here, blackout uh, from that uh, buoy. But occasionally we'll get some buoys out here that are, you know, malfunctioning and it will show like a thousand foot water column height and uh you know a couple fear mongers out here will pick up on it and say look at this there's a thousand foot drop here be prepared for something major going on you know and it just the thing is if there's a thousand foot water column height difference we're gonna see that all over the place a thousand foot difference uh, is something you don't want to mess with but obviously these things go into error mode and uh, defunction mode and uh, yeah, so you know they're out there in the middle of the ocean, underneath the lo they're sitting on the salt water, and you know out there in the sun 24/7. So they're gonna go and have some errors on occasion here. But uh, for now, everything looks quiet and calm. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it, folks. I'm just gonna call it a night here. About 11 o'clock my time. Got. Uh, bunch of stuff due tomorrow for uh, school so I got to get caught up on that first thing early in the morning but uh, once we get caught up I'll jump on the uh, computer here and provide a update for the Wednesday morning here so we'll catch you guys back out here early in the morning sometime stay safe have a good night